Um, I think this fits the theme, what the hell, and it's new, so few people have heard it, but it's impossible not to with everybody going from open mic to open mic. Handful. This handful of soil holds the history of the earth. Mountains that rose from lava, shot up out of magma and met their match. Gentle drops and curling rivulets wearing away crystals borne by wind across expansive terrain. Rough ridged guardian range surrounding new formed seas. Blue depths from which first green grew advancing onto land to thrust down roots, cracking fine fissures, burrowing up soil into blankets, adding its dead black composting remains with each successive season, nutrient drenched sod grows richer. More complex forms spiraling, progression out of DNA helixes. First cells of life appear in C, Amoeba after amoeba split, burst into billions. Each clone of original organism coexists, combine, evolve into multicellular manifestations. Germ to virus to mold to blossoming vegetative mutations. Ride waves or fly or crawl to land. Phylum, ordo, and familia expand. Amphibian, reptilian, mammalian. Carbon footprints left turn to fossil as they decompose, becoming fodder for new growth. Seeds sailing on zephyr or excreted by migrating beasts invades, revises ecosystem. Loam and dust mix into mud, grab flecks of fractile mineral, slide and flex between cracks over and under rock and rubble. Flake that was once skin and bone and branch flies across continents, rides over waves, mixes over aeons. No land abides that does not speak of other scapes, grove, jungle, desert, plain. In all, all is mixed. In all, all remains. Scoop up shallow clump of soil in your hand. You hold it all, the planet, the very stars, the original power that made it manifest. Gaze in wonder of interconnectedness. Did a triceratops turn into that leaf? Did Achilles' sandal skid across the stone from whence that speck of dust journeyed to arrive in your palm at this moment of exploration? Feel the weight of history in your hand, then toss the dirt high. Let the wind carry it. Let it fall back into new formations. Let history become the future. Let the future become history, handful by handful. And I'm just really quick gonna go way back. This is the very first Ringa I ever wrote. So that goes back a ways. Facing the stillness, devoid of detail, essence nearing perfection lacking any clear pathway stumbling through the underbrush each step each wrong turn leading back to the same place each time new lesson first learning then unlearning layers peeled and discarded fruit of our labor some total of a lifetime sweet sour or rotten Okay, thank you all very much. Unmute yourself. Oh, oh Michael Dole. Yes. That was Michael Sindler. Michael, make sure that you check the chat. I believe Diane Ward said that she joined Lighthouse because of you. I'm, I think that's what she said in the chat. So make sure you check the chat. Also put into the chat the uh, the link so that other people can do the same. That was Michael Sindler. And he mentioned Renga. I love it. R-E-N-G-A. Look it up. Japanese style poetry. And anyone who's been following the Monday Night Online open mic knows I have a special place in my heart for Japan and the poetry and the whole history behind that. But all right, 
we got to keep moving. We got to get on to the next poll because we got a lot of people here. Elemental. It feels like forever since I've heard this dude. Maybe it's only been two weeks, maybe three weeks, but it feels like forever because he's got like so much energy. And when he's not around, you can feel that void. Elemental. It's good Man. to see you. Good let to see the you, people, advocate. Let the people know where they can follow you. And then the floor is yours, brother. Appreciate you, man. It's always good to rock with you, Advocate. It has seemed like a while, man, but uh, you know what I mean? I'm back in effect, man. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop it, man. You can follow really everything at elemental.com. Um, same way you spell the name. Just check it out. It's a book coming. Some things happening, man. So um, look out for red or green books. So check this out. Uh, this is some new shit. Let's get it. So what's next? Tanks? Nah, I already got those on the streets. Armored soldiers? Well, we got those too. A full-on army marching down the street claiming dominion over everything from Pacific to Atlantic supremacy checklist. Check, check, and check. Sounds like checkmate to me. This is a mastery of the art of war. Rodney King in LA, the blatant disrespect shown by law enforcement at every stage. We saw the mockery of justice, the riot, the quiet. We asked, what's next? Then Amadou, how could you sentence death when your vocabulary is nothing more than safe and semi let these clicks make their clicks the language of the law, James Byrd, Jasper, Texas, the diabolical deeds done in broad daylight by bigots with booze for brains acted in full confidence of immunity, impervious even to the letters of the law. I'm at Aubrey, Glen County, Georgia, more clicks with a license to have more clicks than clans. When do we start asking the right damn questions? What's next? Do you see, did you see the chokehold they put on Eric Garner? Left just enough room in his airway for him to cry out mercy. One last effort to remind his attackers that he too was human, capable of speech, was exercising his right to be big and black and strong, willing to go against the grain to make more than simple pocket change. Oh, I see. Clear as the Zimmerman speech used to call for clearance to put his God-given Second Amendment right in action to walk in his privilege on his privileged streets without the presence of this problem, carrying what could only be summed up as weapons. Clearly, didn't you know the power of the rainbow? Have you counted the death toll from Skittles lately? I mean, the rapid acceleration of candy-related deaths are staggering, right? Or the number of toy gun-related homicide cases, keeping detectives working night after night, more shifts than grave diggers. How about the string of Swisher Sweet-related deaths? No? I mean, there must be some explanation why black men are targeted for such barbaric behavior. What's next? Shoot an unarmed man for having a weapons permit? That wouldn't happen, right? We live in a society that confines cold-hearted, calculated killers, right? They deserve to be studied. Identify the killer gene to revamp psychotic synopsis for future implantation in the advanced models. I mean, newest overseers keeping the plantation from roaming debris. Please excuse my vulgarity. I meant the latest crop of mercs to bring the megahertz. I'm sorry, I'm getting heated. What's next? We watch another trial, kangaroo court, dancing around cases and precedents. It's a circus, swallowing verbs while crafting curves and loops, swoops and fruits from poisonous trees. We see another judge seat another jury hoping, I mean, really, really hoping this doesn't end so many others have in a heartbreaking fashion for the world to see. Having the wrong complexion in your hands is threatening through the eyes, through the crosshairs of a stereotype. Even in uniform, defending the country that condemns us, fighting for the very flag that wave in our faces. We say, you're welcome. They say, get on the ground. Put your hands behind your patriotism. Where are you from? Do you know where you are? What's next? Another family? Another community? Another Dante Wright? What's next? Peace? Reform? Or revolution? Unmute yourself. Oh give my energy. God. Dude. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. He's yeah. 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 Powerful. 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 Seriously. Yes. You are a gift. Elemental. Make sure that you put your information in the chat so that the people can see it. Okay, okay, we gotta let the mic cool off a little right there, all right? Because we also got some people who showed up late, so uh, let's let the, let's let the mic cool off a little. Take care of things right here. 
Uh, this is the Monday night online open mic in case you're wondering what the fudge have I walked into? Yes, the Monday night online open mic. If you are watching us on Facebook or YouTube and you would like to join us on Zoom, you can. The number is on the left hand side of your screen, 279-995-364. I am your host, Advocate of Words. When you spell words, that's what is E at the end because you know hip hop. What, what? Our sign up list for tonight is closed. If you would like to sign up, the sign up list begins. 24 hours uh, before the show on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. To sign up, visit newyorkin.org. Then you click full events calendar. When you get there, you click on the date that you want to sign up for. So like next week, it would be April 19th. And you would get an artist RSVP ticket. An artist RSVP ticket is the only way to sign up for the open mic. Oh, we got more people coming in. Umberto Marte just came in. So um, also I am aware, why is that acting like that? I am aware that we had trouble with the open mic list last night, what happened to show before it, something about a button got clicked or someone did something with it and it pushed it back for like, I think 24 minutes to open up. I don't know what it is, but what that also means is that now the curtain Behind the curtain has now been shown to me as well. So I am now two layers in so that if that happens again, now I'll, I've been given even more power. So apparently there are multiple curtains. Um, maybe the last one is the iron curtain, but I'm, I'm, okay, we're not here for my jokes. We're here for us to call the next poet. Here's what's really interesting. I've got two poets who are coming up next, okay? They are performing separately. First, we are going to go to our friend in India who wakes up and has breakfast with us. And then we are going over to Brazil because one of our uh, community members is going to do that same poem, but in Portuguese. First, if I got you confused, I know, right? Like New York Poets Cafes in New York City, we're going to a poet in India, and then we're gonna go to a poet in Brazil who's doing a Portuguese translation. Don't worry, I got you. Let's unmute. Unmesh Mohitgar, unmesh. What I'd like you to do is let the people, tell the people where they can follow you online and then get into your poem. Thanks, thanks, Advocate. Uh, you can follow me on Unmesh Mohitkar, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Advocate, you will have to unmute uh, Luciana as well. I will be reciting one poem. She will be following me with the port uh, in Portuguese. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I thought it was going to go one at a time. I apologize. Let me unmute Luciana. Thanks. From the Bronx so, to India to Brazil. All right. Yeah. yeah. First of all, thanks to Luciana for translating poems from my book, Light, Shadow, Life, The Missing Verse of the Soul, available on Amazon to Portuguese. I am so happy and excited. So I will read it in English and Luciana in Portuguese. Here we go. First one is a uh, keep keep dreaming. They said, forget it. Dreams never come true. Go back. My indomitable spirit replied, world we see today was someone's dream yesterday. Somebody is dreaming tomorrow's world today. Whatever happens, till the last breath, I will keep dreaming. Uh, Luciana, you can tell people where they can follow you and then read the poem. Continue sonhando. Eles disseram, esqueça. Os sonhos nunca se tornam realidade. Volte. Meu espírito indomável respondeu, o mundo que nós vemos hoje foi o sonho de alguém ontem. Alguém está sonhando hoje o mundo de amanhã. Não importa o que aconteça, até o último respiro, eu vou continuar sonhando. Thank you. So next one is called uh, Life Goes On. Win or lose, happy or sad, good or bad, love or hate, just smile. Because life goes on. Like a tree, sun or rain, calm or hurricane, flowers bloom, branches fall, just stand tall and life goes on. Wine or water, full or hungry, just fight and survive because life goes on. 
a vida continua, ganhando ou perdendo, sendo feliz ou triste, bom ou mal, sentindo amor ou ódio, apenas sorria, porque a vida continua, como uma árvore no sol ou na chuva, na calmaria ou no furacão, as flores desabrocham, os galhos caem. Mantenha-se altivo, que a vida continua. Bebendo vinho ou água, satisfeito ou com fome, apenas lute e sobreviva, porque a vida continua. Just hang on. Next one is just hang on. Just hang on. Still the sun rises, moon is turning, birds fly, flowers bloom. It's not the end, my friend. You are there for me. I am here for we here for you. Together, let the gardens of our minds bloom. Tiny birds fight the wind, my friend, till the tide turns till the tide turns keep walking just hang on resista ainda assim o sol nasce a lua é deslumbrante os pássaros voam e as flores desabrocham não é o fim meu amigo você está aí por mim e eu estou aqui por você juntos deixe os jardins de sua mente desabrocharem Pássaros pequenos lutam contra o vento. Meu amigo, até a maré virar, continue andando. Resista. Last, this is the last one. Life is a fight. Fear rules the world. Like a pandemic crossing borders. Ruling the world. Terrorizing minds. Breaking hearts. I come across it. Every nook and corner. Fight against it day and night. No solution or answer. Just fight or surrender. Fight is life. Surrender is death. A vida é uma luta. O medo regula o mundo como uma pandemia, atravessando fronteiras, governando o mundo, aterrorizando mentes, quebrando corações. Eu me deparei com isso, em cada canto e esquina, lute contra isso, dia e noite. Sem solução ou resposta, apenas lute ou se renda. Lutar é viver, render-se é morrer. Thank you, One Mesh. Thank you, Luciana, thank you. And it's only because of New York and Poets Cafe this is possible. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks, Advocate. Thanks, everyone. Luciana, you can tell where people can. Super dope, man. Wait, give them love. Give them love. That Let's make so some cool. noise. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Absolutely delicious. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Yes. Great energy. Also, wait, let me unmute Luciana real quick so that she can let everyone know where she can find, where you can find what she's up to. Go ahead, Luciana, tell them where they can find you. Uh, I can uh, put it on the, on the chat. Um, I think it's better to me. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Luciana. Make sure you put it in the chat, though. Y'all go find her because she has taken poems that we are performing online and she's translating them into Portuguese. How awesome is that? Look, I got to put it on speaker view so you can see how serious I am. Look, Monday night online open mic. I look at it like, like, like a big comic book universe. And I love it when like two different characters like have a crossover and cameo and we keep having different types of crossover and cameos and cameos and crossovers that you wouldn't have even expected. Right? Not that it was anything against it. It's just like, oh, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Unmesh and Luciana, I wouldn't have thought of that. This is so awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's keep it moving. Um, and also, by the way, to let anyone know who's interested in doing stuff like that in the future, Luciana had signed up as well, Unmesh and Luciana. So that counts as uh, two different poets. And that means we are on time. Lynn Lane is next. Let me unmute Lynn. Everyone forgets that there was a time that Lynn Lane was just in the background. He never spoke, he never signed up. And now he's like setting fire to our open mic every week. Lynn, the floor is yours. Oh, and let the people know where to find you as well. All right, so 
Um, you can find me on Instagram at lynn.lane.arts and on Facebook, Lynn Lane. And I'll put the rest of the links in the chat. Um, so this is new shit. I just finished it this afternoon. Right now it's called La Paseo. Um, La Paseo was the street that I grew up on as a kid. So this might help it make a little sense. Gone are the days of my childhood. The doors of La Paseo have long since closed. Cicada symphonies no longer serenade our loneliness. Their turbulent wings of defeat beat with abandonment as the sun sets beyond the marshmallow horizon. Kool-Aid caravans guided by hope stand silently as the ice cream man sells his ghost truck on an imagined highway filled with dream sickles of better days. Life at times was like Carascolendas, a childhood split between cultures and languages. Biscuits and gravy and cabrito seco filled my stomach and I was without want, but I was never full. Mornings were filled with the shift in mothers from mine to another. Pena sus pelos, si quieres tres árboles o qué? Was heard every day before the tears of school began to flow at sunrise. Fake wood paneled station wagons, drowning with cumbias and laughter as we headed out at night for Las Raspas at the Mickey Mouse stand on Old Telephone Road, past the cantinas, smoke-filled rooms that hid unspoken violent sins against society's lost children. Never knowing what's behind those doors and as much as not knowing what's behind our own, pan dulce y empanadas pacified our pain as we peddled our broken bikes of our family names onto another day. We remained silent. We held our own. It was the way of the neighborhood. Behind every closed door, a box filled with a generation of secrets lie hidden in a dark closet. We kept our coats close for those winter days, not because we were cold. It was Texas. It was because we needed a place to hide. Don't say anything. Si quieres un soda. Unmute yourselves and give some energy. Super dope. Love it. That was beautiful. Lynn, Lynn Lane. Oh, I was gonna say, like in the beginning, I was like, oh, you're making me hungry, make me hungry. And then like the poem started to take that twist, that turn. I was like, oh man. Man, and I know it's kind of hard. Like, what kind of energy do you give someone after they drop like, 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 like a gut punch like that? You, you know, like can't just can't whistle. Oh my god, that was great! Like, it's it's, it's kind of hard to get. You know, it's like oh, just gotta sit with that. Lynn Lane, make sure you follow him. Dude's involved in a bunch of other stuff. Uh, uh, apparently, he's got a team of super mutant cats that he is taking care of. Um, so make sure you go follow him and in his side of the comic book universe. He's also a really great photographer. All right, next coming up is Roz. We're going to the Bronx. Let me unmute Roz. Hey, y'all. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Looking good, Roz. Go ahead. We're ready to hear your fire. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this one's called From Nemesis to Friend. Quotes I once lived by. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. If I could sit with 16-year-old me, I would embrace her firmly and reassure that she didn't have it all figured out. That what I once thought I wanted would not come to fruition. And though she'd be too stubborn to listen, I'd tell her that God and the universe's plan for me were way bigger than she could ever dream. I was always quite the planner, immensely uncomfortable with uncertainty, always ready from A to Z. I used to say, black or white, never gray. Back then, rigid should have been my middle name, but life barged in with no courtesy knock, no heads up, forced me into a few roles all at once, student and teacher, audience and preacher. I learned that rerouting is not synonymous to ruining. Life taught me that black or white were two extremes. No way to prepare for the unforeseen. Life served me a cold plate of reality. Bon appetit. Ate it all up begrudgingly. If you are what you eat, I am. Adaptability. 
<laughs> I learned that it's not life versus me because she's on my team. And here I am today, blissfully lost in the gray. So when asked what's next, the only thing I am certain of is that I have no clue. I absorb the truth. I tell anxiety to take a seat, but six feet away from me and promise that no matter where the road leads, I will not accept defeat. Though not knowing could be tough, the words I don't know are more than enough for now. I am befriending uncertainty, renaming her surprise. No matter what she throws at me, my comeback will always be still I rise. End poem. Unmute yourself. Yes, Give it up for me. Love it, Ross. Love it. Yes. Love it. Thank you. From the Bronx to her big brown eyes.com and on Instagram to her big brown eyes. Roz has been here long enough. She knows that we switched it up. You're supposed to say it in the beginning. So I'm going to say it for her. Through her big brown eyes.com is her website on Instagram. Through her big brown eyes oh i love it i love it she's always so giving man and she still got that bronx flavor that's still like yo yo i'll beat you up one hand tied behind my back and i'm gonna be vulnerable in this poem i love it i love it through her big brown eyes that's Roz. Roz one of the first people that was on the open mic when i hosted i believe on thursday first time i did an online open mic for the new yo next coming up mr tessa somo where is he oh i see you jen Jen is checking this out. Jen Monique, I'm going to shout her out. You know, she'd be having a life and not coming and hanging out with us, but I'm happy she's here today. All right, where is Mr. Tessa Somo? Well, oh, I see him. It's important to, to let me unmute this dude. It's important because, because Mr. Tessa Somo, what I'm going to start doing here on the Monday Night Online Open Mic is I'm going to keep trying to highlight different poems as much as I can and put it on Instagram and cut it up, get people interested. And the first one I'm working on is a poem about the Monday Night Online Open Mic. You may be familiar with the poem. It's called Master Class. I love that poem. I keep rewatching it, rewatching it. I can perform it now. But anyway, Mr. Tessa Somok, please let the people know where they can find you online and then let's hear your fire, brother. Yeah, so I dropped it on the chat and then on Instagram, folks can catch me on Gashes 2019. Over the weekend, I assembled my book number two and I already sent it out. So keep your eyes, ears open for that. Today's piece is titled Pilgrimages. Events in our lives and environmental forces lead us onto those unavoidable pilgrimages. Those moments of separating, putting away our materialism, overcoming the karmic chaos, doing away with those prolonged painful problems. We lethargically long for a northern transcendental territory to, an un, to unedge the uneasiness of civilization, the journey of reflection, the sort that clash between the individual desire and the failure to meet society's expectations, the northern territory, at least in our imaginations, where we seek the instinctive freedom and resolve regulatory forces of society's demand for conformity and repression. We are complex systems and processes that operate over discontinuities and nonlinear change. The common misnomer is that change can be gradual and incremental, but many systems in nature show periods of turbulence and instability with dramatic changes or growth spurts. Ilya Prigogeny, a Nobel laureate known for his theory of dissipative structures in chemistry, argues that instabilities play an important role in transformation and that most of reality, instead of being orderly, stable, and equilibrial, are seething and bubbling with change, disorder, and process. We find ourselves challenged by the current steady state of a system where, we, where the pressure to assimilate is so great that change often is not gradual and linear, but rather is characterized by disturbance and increased variability. We enter periods of fluctuation where we are destabilized, but open to new explorations of potentiality, adaptive associations and configuration. There is oscillation between old patterns, less viable and new patterns. 
as indigenous people, we linger in quaternity and the pilgrimage and, uh, and as understood forms of beginnings and endings, very much contrary to modernity that idolizes chronometric monotosity. Robert N. Sinclair, in visual metaphor, cultural knowledge and the new rhetoric presents the historical issues related to the concept of foreignness in Native American communities. There are two dominant metaphors among the indigenous groups in the Americas. One of them is the journey and the other is the quaternity. Among many of these groups, both metaphors are combined into the quaternity, which consists of a circle in which the solar cross is inscribed. The circle represents the eternality of motion. The cross signifies the four cardinal directions of the earth, the four winds, the four spirits of nature, and so forth. In Nahuatl speaking communities, Enrique Florescano introduces the Nahuatl concept of time and space, gives a good summary. The cosmogony establishes a geometric division of the space of the earth, which is covered as a horizontal surface in the shape of a, of a rectangle surrounded by water. On this horizontal plane that makes up the earth, the sacred center that unifies the various parts of the universe is found. This establishes vertical communication among the heavens, the earth, and the underworld that horizontally ties together the four cardinal point, points, east, north, west, and, and south. Now what people use a symbolic form to arrange their perception of the universe and, and of time. Now what people depend and rely on the cyclicality of their symbolic universe. The repetition of cosmogonic creation and human foundation is then an entreaty against the change and instability of historical happening, a calling to the permanence of primordial order. These cyclical processes are a time at a time caused by natural events i.e. earthquakes, floods, pandemias, but there is also cataclysms that are created by humans. When the world is contaminated, it is necessary to completely abolish and destroy the old. Once this world is destroyed, then the new one is a replica of what had existed at the moment of creation. End poem. Make some noise for that poetic oh, dissertation for me. Hey, hey, nice, nice. Uh, oh, so come uh, on. Uh, that's excellent. Like, that's I need excellent. to read that. Damn. 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 Mr. Tessa Somok always blessing us with his poetic dissertation. That's why some of us call him the professor. Next coming up. Oh at Gashes2019 on Instagram. Give him a follow, at Gashes2019. Next coming up, we are going back to the Beanie Mafia. It is official, it has been made official because I saw it on Facebook, Elizabeth Strauss. If you're not following her, go follow or be friends with her. Elizabeth Strauss made it official on Facebook and Nick Paleologos is in the Beanie Mafia. Nick, let the people know where we can find you online and then let's hear your poem. You could find me at the real Nick P on Instagram. That's T H E R E A L N I C K P. I only got one for y'all tonight. Brand new. This one's called Murmurs and Loud Shrieks. What's next? What's next? Who's next? Who's next? That's all I hear about. What or who's fucking next? I don't know. That's the best answer sometimes. We're in a pandemic. Everything is shut down. No normality this or next time. I'm stuck like many others in an enclosed a enclosure of four walls with no exit. Seeing the world through lavender lenses about what's going on now through a Zoom screen. There's tensions, trepidations, and trials at first hands. There's answers being spoken. The inhabitants hearing aids have been shut off, tone deaf to the commu cries communities called out, stuck in suspended reality behind cell phone and laptop screens, screaming, streaming out Netflix, cat videos, and murders for all to view in Snapdragon lenses because our daisy lenses have been tainted and some have just noticed this stain. You can always anticipate the next day. Let's focus on the here and now and never forget the past and the names. Amadou Diallo, Atatiana Johnson, 
Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Dante Wright, and the many names lost in that vicious, unrelenting cycle. Next time you see me, don't ask me about what's next or who will be next. Instead, ask how the fuck we can fix what is going on. Done. Make yes. some noise for the rage, oh, Monty. So yes, uh, yes. oh, yes. oh, oh, the building. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. B in the building. Yes. The real Nick P, Nick Paleologos, always bringing the intensity. He is a mainstay here in the Monday Night Online Open Mic. Make sure you give him a follow at the real Nick P. All right, Nick, go uh, go smoke some funny cigarettes now and calm down. All right, man, I want you to bust a, a blood vessel. We need you here, man. We need you. We need you here for now, and then you're gonna be upset. But we can. We need you here for what's next, too. Okay. I know we're not supposed to think about what next, but all right. So, at the real Nick P. Next coming up, we've got Paul Skiff. Paul Skiff. If you are not familiar with him is the OG here at the New Eureka Poets Cafe. I just lost him. I had him and I just lost him. Where is he on here? Got him. <clears throat> Louis Sider. Paul Skiff actually closed out our one year anniversary. It's always an honor to have him. Paul, I'm liking the, the, the new background. Let the people know where they can follow you, brother, and then take us to church. Uh this is paulskiff.com. I don't want to um, divert you too much, but I'm going to pull a fast one on you and say I want to poem it forward to who's ever the last person on the wait list. Great, Scott. We have a pleasant gesture. Paul Skiff is giving up his spot for who we have on the open mic list. Okay, here's so, the crazy... Um, just, just wanted to also... Thank you. Uh, I don't know how many, you know, I want to fill up, a, you know, 4,000 buckets with thank you and dump it on your head for all of this for the last year. Thank you very much, Advocate. You work really hard for us. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Paul. Are you kidding me? I love it. I love doing this. Like I said, you, you, all of you always make me look so good. And Mondays are. Oh. Tuesdays become the new Monday now, right? Like Tuesday is like the hangover, the down, they're like, ah. You know, Mondays are great because of, of, of this community and I love it. Okay, so here's the problem. Number 35 on the list is Sarah Erin, who is not here. Number 34 on the list is Luis Santiago, who's not here. And he had hit me up, I think, saying that he wasn't gonna be able to do it. So number 33 on the list is Generalissimo, who is not here. Who's, I don't see him, no, I don't. I see Overdose and Baby Overdose, shout out to Baby Overdose. Shout out to Scott Pleasance, who we just mentioned. I see him here in the building. I see Poetic Desire in the building, but no Generalissimo. Okay, is Nightcrawler here? I know Nightcrawler, I see Nessa here, hi Nessa, but I don't see no Nightcrawler. Oh. When you said you were going to throw me a curveball, uh, Paul, you really threw me a curveball. Okay. Kanisha Irvin. That's a new name. Oh, is Kanisha here? Is Kanisha here? Is Kanisha Irvin here? I don't see anyone. I see Boaraku in the building from Japan, but I, I, but I see no kidney. We're going to, we're going to make this happen. Um, um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, wait, I'm being told that Luis Santiago was for Lacan from the Philippines. And I think Lacan is here. I see Abigail. Abigail is here. Hi, Abigail. But is Lacan here? Where is Lacan? I thought he came. I'm, I'm seeing Diane Ward saying yes. I see Whitney Salgado. Hi, Whitney. Where uh, people are pointing for all of our boxes. Oh, I do see Lacan. There we go. OK, Paul. We do have a spot. Okay, we're going to give it to Lacan. Thank you, Paul. PaulSkiff.com. Make sure you check this dude out. Every week he takes us to church and he just gave up his spot. The OG gave up his spot. Thank you, Paul. Lacan, are you there? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, at, wow. Uh, um, good, magandang umaga. Good morning to everyone. And um, I am Lakan and I am from the Philippines. And huh, whew, wait, I was remember that. And we are, well, I don't think that we'll ever get fully prepared for something anyway. <laughs> Um, and my first uh, piece is going to be a cover, and it is going to be in Spanish. <laughs> um, and I am... All right. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Tierra Dorada, Hijo de Sol de Oriente. Su fuego ardiente, etiratiendo está. Tierra de amores, del heroísmo cuna. Los invasores no te hallarán jamás. En tu azul cielo, en tus auras, en tus montes y en tu mar. Esplende y late el poema de tu amada libertad. Tu pabellón que en las lides la victoria iluminó. No verá nunca apagados sus estrellas y su sol. Tierra de dichas, de sol y amores, en tu regazo dulce es vivir. Es una gloria para tus hijos cuando te ofenden por ti morir. That is the original uh, national anthem of the Philippines, which was written in Spanish, um, written by Julian Felipe. And my second piece for today uh, is something that I wrote a few days ago. <clears throat> and uh, the title is A Benign Dashed Line. <clears throat> Beware. Those are scarlet hands, bled to spill into our serene ocean, to stop the free waves, waves a fee, made of vacated vaccinated numbers on two piece full aircraft carriers, it'll paint the shores and shoals with fisted four Ember anger stars dredging our sands to band. Territorial fingers tucked under accosted guards of fearful coasts. Marching with red plated volunteers. Steering, drilling the current, current. <sighs> Between our fagged, flagged flags. Tagging the tugging fishermen. With their cruisers, cruises, atolls, atoll accuses with crimson cues. Superpower flexes its missiles. Its homogeneous hegemony is on the draconian rise, streaming, slithering through our misty aisles, flying with golden debts that'll bet we can't pay that the generous flashes that flashes the communal tribunal seawalls. Dividing us further, their hunger will make our cerulean archipelagos a tributary blunder. Their brick monger of our azure lagoons, their claret fleet will have its feet trample our open navy rifts, disregarding our on-guarding reefs. It rips, tatter, our loud banter because the resurrected banner knows only a vermilion chameleon of a nation they call an empire that will burn us in Shin Jin Ping fire. Should we have this encroaching, poaching dominator, destroyer palms take over our bodies of water? I say never, ever. That is for the Philippines and to the country who en encroaches our seas and our territories right now. Thank you. Amuse yourself. Give it a fill of time. Amuse yourself. 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 Amuse yourself.
Wow. 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 Incredible. Oh, it's after you perform. Make sure you check the chat. A lot of people saying nice things about you, including you, Lacan. I think you have a lot of new fans. If you want to follow Lacan, you can find him on Instagram at the Lacan Poetry, and Lacan is spelled L K N. The L K N Poetry. My man from the Philippines, spitting in Spanish, like like. I'm proud to say we have a very cultured open mic over here. Yes, we do. Indeed. I love it. I love it. Let's keep it going. Ron Mark Thompson. And I I, I saw Ron. Where is he? Oh, I, yeah, I saw Ron's. And I swear that emoticon looks like it's being held as, as, as hostage. I'm waiting, for it in, I'm waiting for it to blink Morse code. Like, help me. <laughs> Ron, let the people know where they can find you and all the beautiful stuff you do. And then the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. And it's so great to follow Lacan, which as many months as I've seen him in other open mics, I thought it's LKN. Never did I realize it's Lacan, you know. And Paul Skiff, it's great to follow you. At least you gave up your spot correctly, not like I tried on first day. So you did it correctly, you know. So I learned my lesson. So you can find me at Ron Mark Thompson and my organization, Bronx Art and Fun Up, B X A F H. And the reason I'm mentioning this, our own Diane Ward, who's going to be here in a few minutes, uh, she will teach another ekphrastic poetry and prose workshop with us. We had so much fun last month. We're going to do it again. I put it in the chat. It's free. All you have to do is RSVP and you're with us. So let me start. What's next? Here we go. In the past, I was always asked, what's next? What are you going to do tomorrow? What are your plans for Easter? Where will you travel in the summer or at work? What's your five-year plan? Seriously, five years? I can't even give you a one-year plan. Heck, how about I live my life one day at a time, especially now in 2021, which so far does not seem to be any different than 2020. If I get up in the morning, that's an accomplishment. If I make it through the morning eating healthy instead of starting with junk food, I consider that progress. If I'm productive in the afternoon, I'll be happy for sure. And if I brighten my own day or someone else's, I certainly will feel good. So here I am, here we are 13 months into this never ever ending pandemic, which we were at first promise would be over after just a few weeks. When one friend died of the virus, I thought that's it. No one is next. When George Floyd couldn't breathe for a different reason, I figured that had to be enough, surely no more. Certainly, I did not think in April 2021, there'll be even more killed by the ones supposed to protect us. What's next for us, we were asked. Will this year be the same as last? Instead of next, how about I worry about the current? How about no more deaths, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sick, no more lost hopes? What can we do that today will not repeat again tomorrow? What's next should be as good or better than today? Ah, I know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to smile at you, at my neighbors, at my friends, at my enemies. I'm going to smile wishing that there will be no more agony tomorrow. I'm going to smile laughing at the pandemic, praying for it to be over by next week. I'm going to outsmile the politicians trying to outlaw our freedoms, knowing that karma will eventually get to them. I'm going to smile knowing that we will beat the crisis and we can all laugh loudly again. I'm going to smile because I know that there only can be good to come next. Because if the next is not good, then why go on with the now? 
What's next? Will be more smiles, more laughter, more happiness. What's next for me? Will be living my life as best as I can. What's next is I'm going to stop my prose poetry here in a few lines. What's next is a better poet after me reading here in Zoom. And in case today you missed my rhymes to summarize, I'm going to definitely now and next smile tonight, hoping that once again, even if just for a brief moment or the next, I gave you hope and made your evening a bit more bright. The end. Unmute yourselves and give some bright energy. Oh, my God. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's an extreme poetry, man. Really. Love it, Ron Mark Thompson. Always bringing joy into the room. I love it, even though his the emoticon over his shoulder looks like it's being held hostage. I love it, and especially that it's at like Ron, you know, in Ron's shot. Because like I said, Ron, he always brings that smile as he as you saw it in you know behind the scenes. I love it, Ron Mark Thompson. Give this dude a follow, man. He has, he's got his hands in a bunch of different things and with a bunch of different artists. And I say it all the time. I want all of you addicted to the Monday Night Online open mic. I want you like this. I want you to, you know, to be coming here all the time. But outside of Mondays, I want you to do stuff. And we have so many people here doing things and connected to so many things. So make sure you give Ron a follow. And also, brighten up your day, man. Not just for the info he's got, but still brightens up the day. Another person who's got her hands in a bunch of cookie jars is next, and that is Marissa Prada. Let me unmute her. Love and I gotta love say- Love advocate. Hello, hold Neil. On, Marissa. Happy Monday. Wait, before you go, Marissa, before you begin, I have to, I have to say, I have to shout you out. There's one thing I don't like. You're always talking about the stuff you're doing for other people. And every time I keep hinting, you know, focus on yourself, people. Promote yourself, let the people come to you, and it's for you. Because I know you're working with other people and you're doing awesome things. But here on, the, on this screen right now, we're seeing you as a poet. And the people who are seeing you are enjoying your poetry. So do not be afraid to allow us to enjoy your poetry, <laughs> which we already do. And I promise you, those who enjoy your poetry are going to be following you. And you're going to be like, what? She's working with other artists? I want to see all this stuff. <laughs> of course, promote it. But make sure the focus is on you. So, Marissa, let the people know where they can follow you and your awesome poetry and, of course, your other stuff you're doing. Oh, my gosh. I think I love you extra now. Thank you. Um, it, I do forget to do that. Follow me, Facebook, Marissa Prada, IG, Prada Painting and Poetry. I author Poetography 505 and co-author The Word is Right, W-R-I-T-E. And, of course, my publishing house, Red or Green Books. Red is R-E-A-D. Please come find me. We have all kinds of awesomeness going on. All right, here we go. Um. Not a trigger warning, because this is a poetry open mic, but a mild trigger warning for domestic violence. Do you feel safe at home? Was never a question the doctor asked when I was a child. What would I have said? No. What kind of power does a child have? Adults don't listen. Adults don't pay attention. Certainly no one has made the answer be yes yet. What next? The doctor takes me home, becomes my parent, calls the police to do nothing again. All the eyes in the world and not a single mouth to mount a rescue. What next? I go back home to my imagination, wait for my wings, get another year older, turn 18 and never look back. Do you feel safe at home? Was asked by my OB, two months pregnant before I could be seen. Yes, was always my answer. What next? Was she going to take me home? 
Teach me how to be a mother. Safe spaces were as pretend as space itself. What next? I go back home to my imagination. Stuff dollar bills in a baby book. Remove bullets from the Glock. Lots of blankets on the floor. Door locked. Need another pillow for my back. Last trimester visit, do you feel safe at home? I wanted to scratch my deceitful eyes from my face since they swam through warning signs of tears. I whispered, no, what next? What was the point? Doctors don't do anything. Adults don't do anything. He's been in rehab a month, no bruises, just tears. She prescribed me antidepressants to avoid postpartum depression. What next? It's in my medical records. I leave him and he uses this against me, steals my baby. If I even break free, building our wings out of old green men on paper who can't save me either, what is next indeed? Next will be another apology and promises of sobriety. Next will be him inside of me, no consent required ever. Next will be two, Next will be a funeral for two. If I can eat, if I cannot figure out how to glue together these wings out of tears and spit and prayers. My tiny baby. I pray that what's next for us is tomorrow. And poem. I just wrote Unmute that. Yourself. Sorry. I haven't had Give some oh. energy to wow. Marissa. Marissa. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're so Marissa. special. So wow. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 Thank you. Marissa Prada, as you see, as you see why I stressed before she went on for her to remember to promote herself and how given she is with her art Marissa Prada on Facebook, go find her. Of course, look at the other stuff she's doing, but focus on Marissa Prada. Take a look at her work and her as an artist. And Marissa touched on something I want, I want to touch on real quick and keep it moving because we do have a lot of people on, on the list, right? Um, I'm not sure, someone had made aware, made aware to me that even though Stony Rican Poets Cafe open mic, this is like a global thing. And there are a lot of people who are not familiar with the cafe and the culture. So one of the things at the cafe is when you walk into the cafe, that in itself is like a trigger warning. And not because we like to push trauma porn. Trauma porn, what I mean is we're like, give us your pain, sell us your pain, right? Like, no, we're like, sell us your poetry. And because our poets have so much freedom, sometimes they give that pain. And we appreciate those artists who allow themselves to be vulnerable. So just so everyone knows, and I got no problem if you want to mention trigger warning, just so everyone knows though, when you go to an open mic, sometimes these poets, they get real honest and open and fucking brave. And I don't curse much at, at, at the host. And some of you may be surprised. Like, I think that's the first time I heard them curse. Like they get real brave and we appreciate that. So going in just so that everyone can understand it. Cause I don't care how strong you are. Every now and then we have a weekday and we can't hear certain things. So, but just wanted to mention that. Back to focus on Marissa Prada. Give that woman a follow. Thank you, Marissa. You are so appreciated and loved here. I hope you know that. Thank you so much. Next coming up is another poet who's got her hands in a bunch of cookie jars and she is balancing it well as well. And she is an awesome writer herself. So let's not get have that get lost. And that is Trisha De Jesus, who's on Instagram as Finn Bell, got her own podcast, open mics, and she knows her stuff. I forgot who I was speaking to, Trisha, but people were talking about editors. And I said, I don't think every, not even, not every good writer and every writer can edit. 
But one of the people that popped up in my mind from this community was you. I don't know if you've ever oh. done editing, but something about you tells me you would be a good editor. Nonetheless. I, I have, yeah, I, I have, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm a little sniffly because my, my wifey, Marissa, what she said hits so close to home, but I'm going to try to, okay. So I build- Run, run with that energy. So yes, yeah. but before we go, right? As you gather yourself, let the people know where they can find you online before we um, hear your poetry. I have a link tree. I will post it because I don't remember what it is um, in the chat. But uh, my Instagram is um, Finn underscore Bell, uh, P H Y double N E underscore B E double L E. Okay, so this is called Baby What's Next. Chew on rose oil ice. Aspirations tonight, sweet thing. Bell in red, all eyes riveted. Don't stop. Stop traffic. Stop the music playing. Spotlight. Do they all know only one gets the prize tonight? If he plays the winning tune when the lights go down. Send a drink her way, get a glance. Glide on over between sets. Uh-uh, boy. Do not pass go. Come hither on its own does not equal a chance. She wants to see you move. Wants to see each of the lilies draping the window to pant. Involuntary quiver. They are beginning to fade into the wallpaper. And she's just going out mid-set for a smoke. Don't follow. Jasmine on wrist does a shimmy, and they all feel it, innermost desire peaking. She packs her addiction tight, fishes her purse for a light, a dozen flicker. A no is a lip corner lifting. One always lingers, a tongue flick is still a no. Stiff, dirty breeze down Solano Avenue. Bare legs invite more eyes to connect, uncross, and rejoin the heat of strange bodies. Permission to press. When they walk up at just the right moment and Luis Enrique sends his favor, baby, what's next? If you don't sweat desperation, hey boy, you might get to nibble on roses tonight. What? I mean, you so beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Ah! Nibble on the roses. I love it. Oh, oh, that's good. Love it, Tisha. Love that. That was good. Nibble on the roses. I don't know if I've ever felt like this, but I feel like my entire body is blushing. Right? And that's just my face. My entire body is blushing. <clears throat> Trisha de Jesus. This woman knows her poetry, and she has such a fantastic range. I did not see that coming. I see you need to be prepared to do everything with Trisha, but she still amazes me after all of these months. And no, that poem wasn't about me. That poem, that poem was about uh, a, a man who's going to knock me out. <laughs> Louis, shout out to Louis, man. That's my dude. All right. The urban cowboy poet is next. The man of legend. Oh, my God. Thursday night. Thursday night. He killed it. Billy Joel is one of my favorite artists. He did a remix. And this is a great way to remind you that our next online open mic is not next Monday, though we will be here next Monday. It is on Thursday. It is hosted by La Bruja. She will be back this week at 9 p.m. Eastern. But right now we're here on Monday with the Urban Cowboy Poet. Brother, let the people know where they can find you online and then let's hear a legend. Urban Cowboy Poetry, Facebook and YouTube. And there's my email if you got an idea for a legend. But I'm not doing a legend today. <clears throat> I want to thank all the poets for being open and vulnerable, doing the heavy stuff so I don't have to. I feel for all the, <laughs> feel for all the causes, but it's not me. I wrote a what next poem for your theme, an optimistic what next. As the world is getting immunized and nations declare all clear, I have one simple request. Get me out of here. 
It's no secret what I want, no mystery to unravel. My family and close friends all know that I just love to travel. When I moved back to Ohio, I didn't mind at all the weather. It's wonderful in spring, summer, spring, and fall. Each winter, I've escaped to some place where it's hot, like Central or South America. In 2021, not. It's not just me that knows I need a winter sanctuary. Ohio folks don't want me hanging around in February. When I stay here, the state records harsh weather in its log. It's like I am a shadow for the Buckeye State's groundhog. But now it's spring. Good weather is here still. I want to go to see the Eiffel Tower, London's West End for a show. Many countries out there, border crossings are a bitch. I've always had a wanderlust, and boy, do my feet itch. Give me mountains, seashores, jungles, wildlife, cities, or museums. So many places out there, you know I need to see them. I'll, I'll go visit my new grandbaby. He lives down in Raleigh. Is he cute, as cute as I say he is? Do this and say, good golly. There's a whole world out there. I've been stuck here in my room. Maybe I'll go see poet friends I made on Zoom. I'll visit writers in between my hikes and watching birds. As Nick P in New Jersey, in the Bronx says, Senor Words. Just email me an invite and I'll hop on a plane. I'll go see Unmesh in India, Generalissimo in Maine. Let Marissa read erotica and tease me with a twerk. You know I'm catching the next plane to Albuquerque. Then no way will my wandering end up in Mexico. I'll decide if I like red or green, then figure out where next to go. I'll head on down to Roswell. I read about that place. I'll meet funny looking people and hitch a ride to outer space. Give me a new city, country, continent, or planet. Any place I can imagine. Just let me go, goddammit. I'm kidding. I won't go to New Jersey, not even out of dare. But for me, the question is not what next, but where. Thank you. Oh, you so cute. Oh, so lovely. Oh, my goodness. So so you. <laughs> the Urban Cowboy Poet, Urban Cowboy Poetry on YouTube. Give that man a follow. I'm a legend now. I was in one of the, 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 the poems by the Urban Cowboy Poet, Senor Words. I love it. That's who I am for the rest of the night. I am Senor Words of the Beanie Mafia. The Urban Cowboy Poetry on YouTube. Go give that man a follow. Love it, love it. Uh, before we move forward, I quickly saw it on Facebook and Mr. Tessa Somo can hit me up. Um, so, and they made it public. So I guess I could say, I don't know why, but Vail Larkin is currently in the hospital. They say they are okay, that they are fine. It's nothing to be concerned with, but uh, that's where they've been the past two days. Um, and all I saw is what Vail put um, on their Facebook saying that they're okay, that's why they're MIA. So I'm hoping uh, we got you in our, thought, our thoughts, Vail. Vail is a mainstay here. We love Vail's writing. We love the energy that Vail uh, gives to this community. So, you know, if we hear about one of our own, we send out good energy. So whatever your belief is, whether you believe in energy or a higher power deity of some sort, yo, send your prayers and, 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 and good energy, healing vibes to, to, to Vail. So I don't know if Vail's watching, but Vail, if you're watching, we're thinking of you and uh, we hope you better soon. And, um, you know, come back to Monday night soon. I hope you, you, you get better. Okay, Dylan DeForge is next. Also, why I'm looking for Dylan, he is here. Our urban cowboy poet had mentioned something 
all types of poems are welcome here. So yes, we are all for the vulnerable and pain. We are also all for the silly and the funny. We are here for all kinds of poetry. I do not ever want to have a night where it's just one type. I love the fact that everyone has their own voice and does their own thing, including this next published author who cleans his room because the cuties be checking him out. <laughs> Dylan DeForge! <laughs> Dylan, let the people know where they can find you online. Then let's see your poetry, brother. Um, you can find me uh, at uh, on Instagram at DeForgery. Um, I think it's fitting that <laughs> Urban Cowboy Poets uh, had a poem about travel. This is a piece that I read on, on Thursday, but it fits in with the theme. Um, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm proud of this piece. Um, so this is newer shit like to people who haven't seen it yet um but i have read it before but this is uh, a trenta say and it's called problem solving on the road to self-actualization i've dug myself into deep pits they were never the intended outcome but here i am with this rusty trowel in my hands standing where the road splits it serpentines and spiralizes as far as sagas and siam I can keep working away at the earth like it'll do me any good. But I know that what's next begs me to do what I should. They were never the intended outcome, but here I am in my most recent ravine running a hundred miles wide, strip mining for a sense of humility, wearing my goddamn aching bones to the marrows. I look around for a guide to lead me out through the nearest tunnel to the surface at least so I can carry on from square one with a purpose. With this rusty trowel in my hands, standing where the road splits, now a man-made river runs over the terrain with the sign on the other side. Rather than wait for weather to permit, I strip and cross the channel with my gear overhead, spitting brine and pebbles when I reach the end and dry off at dawn. With the wooden arrows carved into the post are lines drawn, serpentining and spiralizing as far as Saugus and Siam, but mapped along the way to those destinations are Buddhist temples, Babylonian ruins, and Haraku Dam to the east cast iron colonial statues, gas stations, Atlantic naval bases, and sunken submarines to the west. Both journeys plentiful, but I still feel that urge possessed to keep working away at the earth like it'll do me any good instead of making a choice that will define my life i don't want history to remember me as the man that stood still on a causeway processing all of the rife possibilities accounting for every series of apt accidents writing equations in the dirt creating some new entropy calculus but i know what that what's next begs me to do what i should string up my chewed up boots and press onward stepping in mud stumbling on steep hills i ask what would the world's greatest nomad do when i reach an awkward impasse get stopped by swindlers in the starry arabian night or climb barbed wire fences now what parts will history need to rewrite and i want to read just, read just a small uh, new piece that i wrote that's a bit of an offshoot of the stuff that i wrote about in my chapbook um, and it's called Errors, and it starts off with an epigraph. There's a lot to be written in the Book of Errors. That's by Robert Haas. In a book about male puberty, one page I thumbed concerned body shaming and how to handle it. If you get called out for how her suit you are, say, with the tone of a saint, at least I have hair. What this book doesn't explain is that your target the victim of your vicious teenage mockery will have this moment trapped in the amber of his mind and recall it in the mirror with his nubile nakedness and his patchy face. He will weep in every department store window and curse entropy, the chance to give him the same beard as the men women fawn over in magazines or to get to the terminal heat death part already to forsake the shame. Hell, you might wake up and find the bill for his therapy in your mailbox or a letter from a mother who will never kiss her son on his soft face ever again. Unmute yourselves. Give it Woo! up for Dylan. Dylan, that's how you drop that shit, man. Dope. That is gorgeous Dope. writing, Dylan. Dope. Holy shit. Dope. Thank you so much for that. Beautiful. Dope. Dylan, you look for him at the forgery published author. I, 
I'm so happy he's around. He started coming around, then he then he he left, and now he he's back around. Love having this dude around. There are some people on on the open mic. Sometimes you need to give them a second listen to catch everything. I feel like Dylan's one of them. Hint, hint. Go to our Facebook and YouTube and rewatch tonight's open mic. Look for Dylan. Hint, hint. His room is clean. We get to see a clean room. All right. Make sure that you check this dude out. Okay. At the forgery. Next coming up is a person who I keep saying me. I hope the joke's not getting old. She sits for no one. And that is Gigi. I love, I love the fact that you always stand up and perform Gigi. It, it, it reminds me a little bit like of you know the open mics I'm accustomed to in person. So I appreciate that so much. And of course, I love your poetry and the energy you bring. And uh, Gigi is in central Massachusetts. She is one of the mainstays. She actually started like, I think it was the second Monday night that I hosted Gigi started. Like it was, it was early on. So Gigi, let's people know where they can find you online. You can let's find get into me it. at arcadian-poetry.com and then on IG at iron underscore resilience. All right, I have two poems and both are on theme. The first one is called Attention Deficit. And then the second one is called Malignant, um, Malignant Roster. We'll see how much I can read of that one. All right, Attention Deficit. Focus, stay focused, ADHD, the neurodiversity that won't let me be, let me breathe. Each breath timed and scheduled, chasing the dopamine like a drug fiend, wondering when I will feel the next high. No, focus, stay focused, thinking of what I need to do next. I think at the speed of light, despite my might, I leave work unfinished, list undone, my will diminished, my concentration like matter goes from solid to liquid to gas, then evaporates until I find my next fixation. Focus, stay focused, my head filling with fast thoughts, unable to stop, mulled down by the background static of white noise directed to my destination, our, high, our roads and highway exits that all have been renamed. Onlookers now wondering why I'm lost and late for days. Focus, stay focused, stand up, keep standing. If you sit, it's over. Don't question it, keep moving. You pick up new hobbies, new friends, new lovers until they bore me. Place them down gingerly and then forget that they exist. Now focus, stay focused. My mind is an Amtrak with the brakes of a bicycle. Imagine how hard the collision. Academia, a brick wall, brick by brick, trying to box me in while I am unboxing this diagnosis. Focus, stay focused. It wasn't until the Ritalin hit that I was able to answer a riddle me this. What's it like now? Not having to wonder what's next when the white noise is turned off and I can finally stay focused. And this one is called The Malignant Roster. It started with a funny headache that trickled into a migraine, left your speech slurred, thoughts a blur, didn't mimic a stroke, left us wanting answers. What's next consisted of ER visits, mandatory quarantine surgeries where we couldn't see you. Given the diagnosis over the phone, told that you needed emergency surgery in the heist of the pandemic, forms were skipped, confused patients operated on. You called us asking why we weren't there. What's next came the chemo, the radiation, the care, the days that lingered. I watched you fade, your face no longer timeless. You looked so weary. What came next came the cane to the walker, to the wheelchair, to the lifting your body into a bed you'd never get back up from. What came next? The hospice bed, the painkillers for ease, then necessity, the hospice care worker. What's next? No, stop. I don't want to continue this narrative. It was a warm August Sunday morning after three days of hand holding, never left your bedside. What came next was organ music playing, cicadas knelt graveside as I gave your eulogy. It all moved so quickly and I wake up mornings not knowing the days, resistant of the future, knowing I can't keep resisting of what's next after you. Thank you.
Unmute yourselves. Give some energy to Gigi. Gigi, that was amazing. I was so happy. Oh my god. Thank you. What about my dad's birthday tomorrow? So powerful. Happy birthday to your dad. That is Gigi. She also does the hair cutting. And eventually we're going to get my hair cut. It's going to be green. I'm telling you, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, Gigi is, like I said, mainstay and is so very given for her poetry and, and not just stand, you know, just stand up and perform it, but always so given. And I always keep encouraging everyone to keep following uh, people. Um, I remember when, when Gigi's um, uh, father was sick, she was mentioning it to us. And then when he passed and she went away for a while, I'm happy that she's back with us. Much love to you and your family, Gigi. And thank you for always like, you know, being so given. You know, always so given and vulnerable uh, of yourself. It's so appreciated. Thank you very much. Appreciate when artists do that. Again, I don't push for people to share their pain, but I so appreciate when they do, because that's like a part of life. That's such a part of life. All right. Next coming up is Gwen C. I am, where's Gwen C? I am so happy that Gwen's been coming back around. I think this is like a month and a half. I keep like, I keep getting anxiety every Monday like this, the Monday that Gwen's gonna disappear again. And then no, Gwen is back. I gotta get video of Gwen, put Gwen into the intro. Gwen C is here, yes. All right, Hello. Gwen, let the, people know what the people. Find you. let the people know where they can find you and then let's get into it. Perfect, thank you. So it's Gwen C, C everywhere or GwenC.com. <clears throat> I am Kentucky Derby's Mabry, racing heart, respecter of winds like Ed Mabry's. I am woman who must clean, clutter bites me, I be bugging. I am roach free but blunt. Jointly, I am exhaustion and high strung. I am senior advocate's words, unscripted on screen. I am things never said. I am Kentucky born, Texas raised, third coast made, occasional rage. I am denim and blue bonnets. I run, smears onto earth, I am ink athlete, friend requiring no RSVP, Libra with a pen, which means I am poetic justice. I am not black girl magic, but I will be her assistant. Hocus pocus, I wanna see her levitate too. I am not dying peace, but I'll give you 10 tens and keep it 100. I am not testy, but stay focused on the finals. I am not rosemary, but am prone to season. I am not scales, I am not button, but don't push. I could share with you my zip file survival guide for self-treason in every season. Winter depression, spring OCD, summer bipolar, fall PTSD, or poem you into thinking you're falling, falling, fell in love with me. I could be beautiful if the definition changed. I mean, I am beautiful if the definition changed. I mean, I won't be beautiful if the definition changed. No, I am beauty if the spell stays. I could stop waiting for tomorrow today. I could lose track of time, rewind, be a boy. I could rainbow, bend, change the trajectory. I couldn't be ballerina, nor gracefully stay in my lane. I couldn't be one who drops dimes. I couldn't not be penny pincher. I couldn't keep up with the Joneses. I never was love. I've never been the shell for women of which men choose to connoisseur but they still chose to pursue her. I never was connoisseur of coloring within lines. I never was architect, but my roots, limbs, and leaves poisonly branch after, after every cut I build. Silently, I never was approved. This or that wasn't allowed to be, but I did it anyway, loudly. I never was settled, so I don't know what's next. That's that piece. I don't mute you so scared of a Gwen C. Gwen C. She backed it up. So Gwen C. She backed it up. Thank y'all. Yo, the cliff notes to the poem is I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not everything, but don't fudge with me. I love it, Gwen C. You see why I got so giddy before Gwen was on? I was like, yes, Gwen C is here. Oh, and you saw the shirt too? I totally missed the shirt. I was so giddy over the woman's poetry. And here I am working at the New York Poets Cafe and she's got the shirt on. I'm supposed to be hint, hint, go buy it. I didn't even think about it. Like Gwen C anchored in poetry. Make sure you give that woman a follow. She's fire and she's wearing a fire shirt go get yourself a fire shirt though it's not guaranteed you'll have fire poems like Gwen C 
I have to go and work on my poetry now. Okay, next coming up, Ed Poetastic. Got his name right. I spelled his name right. Ed Foreman92 on Instagram. Ed, the floor is yours, brother. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you too. Hey, how's everyone? Hope everyone's feeling potastic. And Gigi, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, my deep condolences for you and your family. But um, but the show must have gone on. So thank you very much for having me here. And I'm going to read my poem real quick. Sorry to waste your time. Um, this is called... What's next? What's next? I haven't a clue. Wearing my shoes, bathing in clean dew, traveling to avenues, playing my mini cues, hearing annoying kazoos, driving my iron canoe, drinking the blues, soaking life's brew, experiencing sticky glue, tying my inner screws, putting on life shampoo, shooting from sharp bamboo, ignorance I quickly shoe, eating food I chew and chew, dancing in a random fondues, being a cool and calm statue, seeing cute peacocks flying through. It's just a day, and there's another day in the concrete zoo. Many things to do, act and view, trying to achieve and come through. Sometimes life, you need to break through. Living life day by day, but did you knew you grew? Um, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Give it up for Ed Poet. Nice. Thank you. I love each and every one of you. You guys are poet, tired, poet, poet, and poet, magnificent. Magnificent! I love it. Oh, incredible! <laughs> Ed Poetastic, loving the rhythm. You can find him Ed Foreman ninety two on Instagram. I'm not going to forget it because one of the other shows I forgot. I hate doing that when I do that, so I'm never going to forget it. Ed Foreman, Ed Poetastic. He is also on Facebook as Eddie Foreman. So a couple different places you can find him. Next coming up is the woman who does the impossible. She balances wisdom and youth. I don't know how you do that with your spirit, but somehow you do, because usually it's supposed to be one or the other. You can't do both. She's breaking the space-time continuum. I love her poetry. She's such a talented artist. <laughs> Diane Ward. Look at it. There is so much like white light behind you. It is like you are like in heaven. You are angelic. I know I'm going to get killed by your husband, but it's so worth it. Your poetry is so worth that. Okay. <laughs> Diane Ward. Thank you so much. Yeah, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I wanted to read what I wrote for Fire, The Prompt Fire, which does talk about what's next, but I wasn't able to do that prompt. So I wanted to read Fire. The flame of desire to love, to harm, to lust for life. The fire that burns to do good or its twin equivalent opposite counterpart that won't be denied, a precariously thin line and not so opposite. And not so opposite mode oftentimes to build, to renew, to save, to keep from harm, the fire that ignited life in the first place. The intensity of a blinding rage can be a most palpable fire. Were we engendered out of rage or want or loneliness or revenge? The cost, the emotional revenue, the price of trust, the cinders that float and singe the heart, the feelings of your flame, your flicker, your rage, your heat, for what? Worth, what fire? Fire in the eyes, the throat, the voice, the excitement brings you alive, doesn't it? Fire opens your vocal cords, otherwise nasal drip clogged. Given a squelch, its potential makes you feel important now, doesn't it? Now that you have an ignition switch, you are going to try live fire. Need a friend? Fire up the rhetoric. Fire up those loose lips. Fire up you're creative, point made. The fire, the meals cooked, the fire, the pots boiled in the fire, the swath and the swir, the fire, the fire consuming, always lightning combustion, but the fire of the nucleus, the ever popping fires lit infinitesimally till you die and become ash 
by fire and consumed as dirt in water or sea or windblown landing on a plant in a balcony or you ash landing on a seagull's wing you sail on a minnow's breath and get consumed by salmon eaten by a bear killed by a man living in the woods hunted down as criminal body remains used for dog food licked up by a squirrel like your behavior serving nuts to feed your insecurity, your jealousy, your immaturity until you travel spawn on the worm and become dinner and get burned again. Fire is your friend or foe. Got a light? Need a light? Rub two sticks together like you did long ago when you plotted a way to catch prey. Become the prey or learn about what and how to cauldron warm by dance and chant the conjuring of how to light a path towards praying for a lasting fire. Thank you. Give some fire to Diana. Yeah, that lasting fire. Oh, lovely. Yes. Lovely. Yes. 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 Yeah. Lasting fire. That was, that was great. Thank you. I am war bringing that fire. I told you, right? Like you hear it in her, in, her, in her voice. Like it's like like wisdom and youth. This comedy. I love it. I love I love her writing. I love how she performs it. It's like sincere, it's genuine. She's not trying to be something she's not. I love it. Diane Ward. Um, she's not on social media, but you can find here on Monday nights. Also, make sure you give Ron Mark Thompson that follow because she does some work with him and she is teaching uh, a class hosting a workshop. So may a frastic workshop, make sure if you're like, what the hell is that Greek word? Well, you're going to have to follow them to find out. Diane Ward, thank you so much, Diane. And I saw Mary Blenderman, I think is later on in the open mic. Mary was jumping all up and down in the camera, like those files. Like, yeah, I was with you, Mary. I was the same way. It was fire, fire. Okay, Jeff Cottrell is next. And this man can sell fire to the devil. That's how good he is. Jeff Cottrell, let the people know where they can find you online and let's hear your work, brother. All right, I'm at jeffcottrell.com and Facebook and Twitter. And I have a big gig this Saturday night with you, advocate, with him. Uh, the Voices of Spoken Word, hosted by Mr. Speaker, Ray James also in it, a bunch of other New York and Virginia poets are in it. And uh, yeah. The devil bought his fire from me, by the way. That's how good I am. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna do a poem, relatively new one. And I just found out today, it's going to be published in a uh, web magazine called The Dreaming Machine, I think, based in Italy. And it's called, If It Happened Now. And if the Salem witch trials happened now, we'd hang Rebecca Nurse for her witch privilege. And all Giles Corey's pleas for mercy would be met with mocking taunts of, okay, boomer. Susanna Martin and John Proctor would decry the lack of innocence presumed and say due process had been undermined. But every judge would shout all protests down with consequence and accountability. And Abigail Williams would tell her story in an HBO documentary. And if the reign of terror happened now, we'd leave it to the internet to judge the fates of nobles and their families. Marie Antoinette would never get a trial. The Twitter sound and fury would be more than enough to rush her to the scaffold steps. Her live streamed execution would break YouTube. Her head would sit atop the Eiffel Tower and pose in selfies with millennial tourists. And Robespierre would win the Pulitzer Prize for his tell-all, Catch and Kill. And if McCarthyism happened now, we'd name and shame our socialist ex-partners and friends in epic social media rants, accompanied by the hashtag commie2. Blacklisted screenwriters and actors all would cry and moan into an empty void, only to hear, this isn't cancellation, you're only being criticized, shut up, while they collected unemployment peanuts. And Elia Kazan would grace the covers of Time and Vanity Fair for his courage. And if the satanic panic happened now, we'd scream, believe the children, twice as loud. And anyone demanding evidence in the McMartin and Little Rascals trials would be on the wrong side of history. 
A hundred famous goth and metal bands would sign an open letter and Rolling Stone begging for freedom of speech and free expression, but everyone would scoff and call them whiners. And Tipper Gore would be immortalized in a Netflix hagiography. Good thing humanity has reached its apex and these events could never happen now. That was if it happened now. Unmute yourself and give it up for Woo! Jeff Cottrell. I love that. That was great. Absurdity is your friend, my friend. Absurdity. I love it. I love it. He rocked that out on Thursday night. I'm glad I got to hear it again. And it kind of works with like a little bit what ne what's next, except like in the opposite direction is sort of way. But I really love it. Jeff Cottrell, make sure you check him out, jeffcottrell.com. And as he mentioned, um, I have a very busy Saturday. This Saturday from two to five, I'm hosting the workshop. And then I am going to be featuring with Mr. Speaker and some other awesome poets like Jeff Cottrell, Ray Jane, as he mentioned. And then later that night, I am hosting an erotic poetry show with the Tantalizing Angels, which I've been doing every month. It gets hot and heavy. And that even though I'm hosting it, it's being presented by who I call the queen, Monica Martinez. She is the CEO of Tantalizing Angels, and she deals in um, uh, novelties. Let's just say that. She deals in novelties. It's a great time. Make sure you're following me at Advocate of Words. I'm going to put all that information on my Instagram tomorrow. I've been trying not to flood your news feed because I know I so went overboard with the one-year anniversary, but I was so proud of everyone and happy and all that good stuff. So I mentioned April 17th that I am teaching it is a three hour workshop, but I'm only doing two and a half hours because in a half hour, even though uh, the Urban Cowboy said he really doesn't want to go to New Jersey, which I understand, I'm going to be working with a dude from New Jersey who for half an hour is going to be teaching. And that is Paul Gonke. So brother, let the people know where they can find you online and then let's hear that fire. You can follow me at Paul Conqueso on IG and Venmo and Linktree, all that shit. If you want to jump down the Linktree rabbit hole, you can buy my book there, Disappearing Boy. It just turned a year old about a week ago. Um, so yeah, if y'all want to show it some love, because I, I don't think I plug it often enough. An advocate plug in the telling Marissa, plug yourself, love yourself. I kind of, you know, took that on. And also I was inspired by uh, Elemental's piece. So I literally like wrote a piece while I was in the room so this is like new newest shit and then i have another piece real quick after this both are on theme this is called resurrect what's next minnesota an eight-year-old mowed down by patrol car a baby in stroller with bottle mistaken for ak-47 all i know is minneapolis is a cancerous cyst of a city's twin what's next america Another orange threat or some cue, anonymous storm of government. What's next in our hoods beyond white hoods, hiding in plain blue uniformed sight? How many more black human lives must be made cannon fodder? How many fathers, daughters, sons, mothers? How many night larks must sing the same painful song before they realize this is the stress call, not battle cry? What happened to Dante Wright was beyond wrong, downright criminal. This sickle swinging crew, serial killing and police cruisers, body count and bloodshed, second to no other hate group, no KKK or pack of skinheads could reach the notches on their nightsticks. This fraternity of murderers deserve far worse than the probation and paid leave. We need not reprieve until the moment we can say we have abolished them demolishing these headhunters licensed to kill under the long arm of the law, raised and cocked at flocks, seeming seeking more bodies fallen from flight to add to their Stockholm, Stockholm in earthly perdition. Do not seek the court of public opinion. Seek forgiveness from your God or maker, whatever you believe holds dominion because the judge and jury giving out verdicts holds nothing worthy of their sins to give deliverance and no life sentence or death penalty would ever be enough could never necromance the flight and light back into the beautiful black beacons they snatch from this life with no right. All right, second piece. This is called The Future Freaks Me Out, AKA Scars from Tomorrow. You know, the thing about tomorrow is it never arrives. Each day we say tomorrow will be better or the sun will come out tomorrow. By the time we reach that stroke, of midnight, our tomorrows evaporate clear into today's. It's like trying to trick a child by saying eyes closed, but when we reach destination, our inner kid has already peaked. You know, my trauma has a tendency to ruin surprises for me. 
Clad in bandaged anxiety, mummified and fatigued, and these scar tissued seams make for poor wrapping paper, it seems. Past partners of mine have tried a bunch of times to arrange surprise parties only for me to get peeved at them. My whole family actually, I guess, it's that excess baggage of un unidentified package that drags me back to this need to control. Thus, Tomorrow's freak me the fuck out because they're unknown. I mean, is it just me that loathes surprises? A bored housewife role-playing mystery with father time, faking it as strangers just to get their kicks. And the irony is tomorrow never comes. Constantly edging, hedging its bets. You'd be the one to climax and climb back in bed so they can claim dominance. Tomorrow's a sadomasochist who strives to fuck the living daylights out of you but never stays to see the next day's sun lighting up cigarette in revel and rest, fleeing that night as you sleep. And you always tend to get this awful feeling, this swelling in you to oversee all things coming and going, base need to domineer seeping in, a dance partner constantly taking lead. Fuck a blindfold or handcuffs. My traumas need safe words and soft touch. Even the act of foreplay carries the necessity to be at the helm. Headmaster chief, you know, I don't actually like receiving oral, it bothers me. Just to lay prostrate and do nothing, feeling obsolete and obstinate when not in driver's seat. Perhaps it's some deep-seated character flaw or design cheat, something broken in me. How letting go of control doesn't seem to bring pleasure or drain my orgastic HP. Maybe it's the connection between my first and what happened to me at eight that leads one to feel they can be misled by anyone, especially those they trust. So I don't deal with loss of control so well. But put me at the helm of today and I'm confident I can steer our ship, but throw the horizon of uncharted waters into the mix and I become a wreck, a scattered mess of tattered flesh and skeletons thought to be buried deep like sunken treasure surfacing an Eastern seaboard of suffering, a drunken wheel steering compass needle towards sunset with no hopes to rise. So time keeps on slipping, slipping into the future, slipped and I've fallen, but I can't get back time past. Tomorrow has always been a mind fuck on a thorn stuck inside of the horizon, despite the fact time's been up. You know, sometimes I stay up all night just to stave off tomorrow, because that's when the haunters would harm me under cloak of dark, hands roaming comforters coming face to face with the realization that if all time is a construct, then so are my scars past as are all my tomorrows, that I will never build a foundation on the ever fading shores of erasure and no one should live in fear of tomorrows because nothing promised to us is ever guaranteed to sprout another day. We must try our best to water each waking moment's fledgling seed as if we know the next will grow, finding my own ways to make amends with all my scars from yesterday's so they don't hold sway over all my todays, I pray can blossom into stronger tomorrows. Unmute yourselves and give some love today. Oh, good. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my Oh, con queso. Make sure you give him a follow, Paul. Con queso, also known as, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, headliner con queso or the Rosie's lesser half. That's my favorite one. It doesn't seem to be sticking, no matter, almost every week I say it, but it's not sticking, but I'm gonna keep trying it. Shout out to Rosie. Paul Conqueso, give him a follow. Next coming up, and because I love y'all so much, right? I love y'all so much. Um, I'm, I'm gonna keep it so real and put myself out on front street. Darius Rubin is supposed to be next, but Darius isn't here. I have no idea who that person is. We would have heard a new voice. So instead of Darius, we got a different new voice who is not rocked here in the Monday night online open mic. And that is Jen Monique. I'm putting myself out on front street because back in the day, I had the only crush on this woman. <laughs> now she is taken, has got a kid. She's like, why are you embarrassing me? Nothing happened, nothing happened, you know, cause she moved on with her life, but I had wow. the only crush on this wow. woman. So I'm glad that you were here in the Monday night <laughs> online open mic. It is wonderful to see that I can get you to blush. Awesome. I am going to take that with me. And now, I, so this is how it goes, Jen. Let the people know where they can find you online. And yes. then let's hear your poetry. I am at Jen underscore Monique underscore poetry on Instagram. You can find me there. That was really unexpected. Um, thank you, words. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I have to get you on that. All right. Uh, this poem, like, 
uh, many others um, on here. It's titled, What's Next? Let the pieces fall where they may. If the pieces happen to make a whole picture, well, then let's not break it this time. But if the pieces don't make a complete picture and the pieces are shattered where they fell, so be it. At least we had a, vi a vision of what it could be, what it could look like. And I think that's enough for me. So what is next? Only God knows. Why must we know everything? Wait, let's take a moment to laugh at that. Ha, because we both know we just need to. Yeah, well, here we are, knowing something that we don't want to know, simply because there's an old spark of hope lying somewhere in the unknown. And if we give up now, for goodness sake, will we always wonder what if instead of what's next? What the hell? Let's just wait and see, right? This is why we got to let the flow flow and the rhythm go, go wherever it wants to. We need to stop worrying because if we, because if we really, because <clears throat> if we were really honest with each other, hell, with our own selves, for that matter, we'd actually realize we have no control over what's happening now, let alone what's happening tomorrow. That leaves us with taking a lot of deep breaths, deep longing stares in, into each other's eyes, tempted kisses filled to the brim with passion. Who cares about what's next? This is going down now. It's to, if tomorrow comes and we are wrapped in each other's arms, well then perhaps, perhaps that's when we can figure it out. What's next? No, 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 forget that. If it's not a cafe con leche from Roombas, then I just don't wanna know. I mean, we know what could happen. The fights, the misinterpretation of feelings and agendas, the side eye looks of mistrust, and of course the even unevenness of our lives. You there and me over here, nah, we don't want none of that. Let's just keep this joint passing back and forth and let it be, darling, this bliss, right? Shit, this is why we shouldn't think and even less ask what's next. Thank you. Unmute yourself. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Better come back. Jen Monique, yes, Jen, when they are shouting one of us, that means you are one of us and you have to come back. Now they love your poetry. Make sure you look her up. Jen Monique on Facebook too. I don't know if she wants you to follow Facebook. But anyway, put your information, type your information into the chat as well so that uh, the people can follow Jen because uh, as humans, we're lazy. We like to copy and paste. And of course, I had to put myself on Front Street. I'm here with the New York family, man. I got to show you all that, you know, I'm real. And real quick story. Yo, one day Jen made me feel like the man. I picked my kid up from school, right? And, and we're walking, she's working in the school. I didn't even know when she stopped me. She's like, oh, how you doing? And mad loud on the schoolyard in front of my kid and everyone. I saw you on CNN last night. You were really great on CNN. And I was just like, my chest filled. I was like, yep. Beautiful woman is saying in front of my kid that her dad is dad is pretty awesome. I felt like the man. I will never forget that day. Jen Monique, give us some love, y'all. I appreciate that. Okay. Mary Blenderman is next. Mary, who caught the fire off Diane Ward, is going to bring her own fire. Let me try to unmute. Mary, can I unmute? Mary, there you are. Where have you been, Mary? I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. Did you go and get a life on Mondays? Not cool, man. I, I can explain. <laughs> yeah, I like, she, she went with it. She's like, uh, uh, I, I can explain. Mary, let the people know where they can find you or if you want to shout out another organization. Now let's hear your poetry. Oh, wait, you got a website, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, maryblenderman.com. Uh, with a little more excitement, we plug ourselves. Mary Blenderman, two ends at the end, dot com. Go ahead, Mary. Okay. Um. So I've been away for the last few weeks because I was busy getting my heart broken and then peeling myself off the floor. So then I saw the theme for this week was what's next. And I was like, oh, good. Okay. I'm also now asking myself that question. Um, so I have some new shit to read. Uh, and before I read 
I would actually so love it if you would join me in taking a deep breath in and out. <sighs> Thank you. Um, this is called Ambulance. This poem is inscribed. The inscription is from the Mountain Goat song, No Children. And I hope when you think of me years down the line, you can't find one good thing to say. And I hope that if I found the strength to walk out, you'd stay the hell out of my way. Your voice, the slow smoke that made every distant song a siren. Not knowing temptation from emergency, I coughed as I pointed the ambulance down the street. Choke a little every day, forget how it feels to breathe. Your voice, the water and the whip. I'd rather be parched than bleeding. I'd rather be alone than afraid. It took weeks for my heart to stop racing for the phone, for the clock in my brain to run down. I could not see myself in my work a skeleton with anxious bones. Because when I thought of you, I thought of reading Pablo Neruda under his beloved Estrellas. I thought of a misty night on top of San Francisco. I thought of the train tracks and the truth about your wedding. And I knew that none of these were lies. I wish you a self portrait with eyes the color of your eyes. I wish you a birthday on which you did not drive anyone to rehab. I wish you dinners you do not ask the mirror's permission to eat. Saul told me we do not fear the darkness. We trust that the moon shall guide us. I wish you the moon's guidance because it can't be me. I heard once that we are all constantly shedding dead pieces of ourselves. So maybe in the future, I will have skin you never touched. Maybe I will be more than a punching bag in your closet. Maybe I will dig a bunker beneath my vegetable garden. Maybe I would rather feel safe all the time than happy only when your voice hangs shining in my sky. Maybe I am remembering the peaceful abandon of empty, endless black. Maybe someone will tell me they mean everything they say and mean it. Mm. Unmute yourself. Oh, so oh my God, Mary. 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 We love Mary. you. Mary. We love you. Mary. That was amazing. Mary. That was amazing. Mary. That was amazing. Mary. Yes, yes. Mary. 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 Welcome back. Welcome back. God. I threw the paint. Oh, no. Mary blended me. Fire. First off, I'm so sorry about your heart being broken. And I didn't know that was the reason you were away. So I'm, I'm sorry if that touched the nerve. Second, that poem was fire, especially that so many quotables, but that line about like how you learned how like, you know, we, we shed pieces of our skin and maybe the next time you touch me, I'll be like this different person. Oh, I love that. I love that. MaryBlenderman.com. When you spell Blenderman, there's two N's at the end. MaryBlenderman.com. Give Mary a follow. Mary Fighter out of Pittsburgh. Out of Pittsburgh. And I know New York, Pittsburgh is supposed to have that Northeast Corridor beef. No beef. I love Mary. And Mary, whoever she is, screw her. Remember, you're my 2021 Valentine. I will never forget that. Mary Blenderman, y'all. A mainstay at the Monday Night Online Open Mic. Incredibly talented. Check out Mary's work. Okay, next we are going, we are crossing the border and we are going to Canada. Ah, you racist people. You didn't think I'm in Canada when I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw all of your faces. Uh huh. Yeah, so we're crossing the border. We're going to Canada with Jody Ortega. Let me unmute Jody. There she is, Jody Hello. Ortega. Jody, let the people know where we can find you online. Yeah, for see sure. Your poetry. Thank you, Senor Words. Uh, you can find me at, at don'trunbabygirl.com. Mary, what the heck? <laughs> I need to take a moment. That was, I know, so good. Um, I'm going to post in the chat something that I'm going to refer to in my piece. 
And um, it's not on theme with uh, what's next, but it's on theme with um, my anger and anti-Asian hate crimes. But before I begin, look what I got in the mail. Thank you, Unmesh. Okay, ready? Trump, T-R-U-M-P. Think Republicans understand my people? Hey, so how are you guys doing? You know, I'm having a bad, oh, sorry. Wait, that's, that's got a different meeting now. I am unapologetically taking up space. Me with my thunder thighs are the rough edges on your patriarchal lines. True story. You commented on how good my English was. You praised my public speaking skills as you looked into my almond-shaped eyes and pointed out my epicanthic fold. You suggested that I get monolid surgery so I could be better. Do you mean better or whiter? And when you ask, where are you from? No, where are you really from? What you're trying to say is, hello, person that is not white. What are you doing here? Please take your snide remarks and walk all over my flat nose bridge so you can fall deep into my big truths. You're drowning. Unable to crawl up my bamboo shoots. You are not part of the Joy Luck Club and I will not love you long time. I am not your cure for your yellow fever. He asked, huh, hey, short A, what kind of Asian are you? Well, as a child, when my father raised his voice, we, his children, shrank. Three decades it took for me to understand that it is not a woman's duty to shrink, that my girlhood was not supposed to be a dress rehearsal to be someone's obedient and quiet wife. I deserve the space I occupy. And too many men think like you, think like number 45. And like his presidential scandals, I will make my voice a public affair. And I won't need a loudspeaker because my story will be buzzing in your ears. Think Republicans understand my people and poem. Jody oh Ortega! Yo, oh that Jody with the heat! Jody with the heat! Yes, Jody. I was oh pulling people off for you, Jody. Jody. Thank you so much. That's a headliner. That was amazing. That was Jody. Thank you. Jody Ortega stirring up some ish on the international level. She's crossing the border illegally through the internet to come share her thoughts. And we love it. No, of course, it's not illegal. Jody Ortega, make sure that you give her a follow. Thank you, Jody. I love it. Like, Jody has started to, to develop, like, this character here with us. Like, she's, like, calling people up. She has her little skits, these discussions with these people. I love it. I love it. Jody Ortega, representing Canada. Lopi LaRoe is next. I love saying this woman's name. Lopi LaRoe. She is also a visual artist and she comes on and she gives us her stream of thoughts. We get to ride on her river of, of thoughts and her artistic ways. I just love it. I just, I, I like the way you write Lopi and I like Thank the you. way you share your stuff. You are very much an artist. You are oozing artistry. All Thank right, you. shut up. I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> At first, let the people know where they can find you, and then let's hear it. Okay, I'm praying that my cat doesn't start yelling because, anyway, he probably will because I said that. That is my. That this is my Instagram. That's my website with my art. I have two poems. Um, this first one is really short. I was I was like going through a bunch of poet, you know, like reams of paper and I found these two and I was like whoa I don't even remember writing these but one of them yeah these are just not new but I don't even remember when I wrote them <clears throat> I 
Have you ever wondered if the shape of a mouth is formed over time by the kind of words habitually uttered? Or does the shape of one's mouth form the words that fall out of it? There are days when my mouth forms no words at all. Wordlessly, I fall into a silent void of me. Entire weeks and years pass by without contentment. A constant malcontentedness falls over me like too many mouths shaped like sinister lips peeling back into a toothy grimace masquerading as a smile. And first poem. Thank you for your snapping, your silent snapping. I know you all can hear it. Okay, this one's dedicated to my mom. We've used up all the space on the planet. Even the sky is cluttered with debris. God, this concept, maybe she is a tree. In all of humankind, all of the mammals, winged creatures, insects, and crawling reptiles, maybe we are all her leaves. Gathering up energy in the form of experience, the central earthly plane. Maybe the tree is sucking up all of that information to feed itself, and then we are empty vessels to be eaten by the soil. Storage, stuff, things, belongings, possessions, goods, objects. What is all of this stuff? So much stuff, photos, letters, books, trinkets once held, once held by your mother, your father's lapel. I found a lock of my mother's hair in a locket in a wooden box inside another wooden box. I remembered that day when I got it. That day she died. I laid on the floor of her hospice room, not under her bed, but almost. I laid there and looked at the ceiling. I tried to see what she had seen with her last eye gaze, the last use of those eyes. Was it simply the ceiling with its grid and recessed lighting or was it a glimpse into another reality? Did she see the sky? I laid there breathing her last breaths. She left. Her body was still warm, but vacant. Her hair had been put into ponytails in a way she would never have done. I took the hair ties out and felt the weight of her hair. I smelled her hair. It smelled like mom. Always a mysterious mixture of patchouli, wood smoke, and earth, like, like leaves. I asked for scissors. I wanted to hold on to that smell, her essence. I sniffed, snipped off a lock of her hair and I saved it. 10 years later, now, I found it inside a locket, inside a box, inside another box, inside a closet, inside an apartment, inside a building, inside a neighborhood, inside a city, inside borders, inside borders, borders inside. Those borders only exist inside. When I opened the locket, the hair, my mother's hair, that I wanted to hold on to, that I needed to hold on to, it was nearly dust. Well, on its way to becoming dust, I touched it and it sighed and crumbled. There was no more smell of the mysterious essence of my mother. It was an idea I had used to comfort myself, an illusion that fell apart over time, the dissolution of this clipping, the breakdown of matter into atoms, the mystery of life, the sweet unknown, the unknowingness of death, we can't hold on to nothing because nothing does not exist. Everything does. And it's all in our minds, inside our heads, inside our bodies, inside buildings and galaxies unknown, unable to be known. Poem. What a ride. Give it up for Lil B. Damn, Lil B. Go. Lil Bro. Lil B. Lil B. Thank you for your beautiful, beautiful poem. ears and thank you for your support. I love you guys. Thank you, you Lil B. Lil Every time I hear Lil B, I'm like, you know, I, I want to write like that. You know, I want some of my writing to be like that, just like this. Just stream of consciousness and just let it all out and like this 
wild, chaotic ride, but like it's like controlled chaos. You, you know, it's like controlled chaos. Like, and then you talk about your mother and the last thing she saw, and I'm visualizing all of this like everywhere. Oh, go check out uh, Lopi LaRose website. Check out her website. Give her a follow. So many talented people here. That is the end of our guaranteed list. We are going to get into the waiting list now. I wanted to shout out some people who are checking us out, like Boraku from Japan. Uh, Whitney Salgado is here again uh, with, without Brad Man. Um, Thomas Connor is here. Shout out to Thomas. It's my dude. Um, MKC. I have no idea who MKC is, but they keep showing up. Shout out to MKC who didn't sign up. Abigail. Abigail is addicted to us. She keeps showing up. I love it. I love it. Hi, Abigail. Someone named Dominique C. I don't know who Dominique is, but I love your picture. Gorgeous picture. Dominique's been here since the very beginning for tonight. Shout out to Dominique. Who else is here haven't called? I'm going to call Bushra because he is on our waiting list, so no need to call him now. Nessa is still here. Oh, Nessa's spending the whole night with us, not just checking in. That's what's up. Hi, Nessa. Kevin Alexander is checking us out again. Shout out to Kevin Alexander once more. There's a couple of people here. They just left. I was just about to give them shout outs. The Withdrawn is in the building. He is on the uh, waiting list. I see Midnight just came in again. He missed the intro where I have him and his Mets paraphernalia. And it's just like, come on, man. I'm giving you love. Umberto Marte. How did I miss Umberto? Shout out to Umberto, who is still here with us. Always checking in, giving love. Okay. So let us get to the waiting list. Andy Mark Kurt is actually supposed to be first on the waiting list, but he's not here. So we're going to our new friend, Bushra. Bushra Elsnusi. Did I say it right? I'm trying to get it. He's from Sudan, Hello, but right get, now in Illinois. Yeah. Bushra that, that is correct. That's, right. that's it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, awesome. Bushra, let the people know where they can find you online and then get into it. A uh, sure thing. I'm mostly around Facebook, so I will type in my, my name over there. And uh, yeah, today uh, tonight I have uh, two short poems for you. I hope you like them. So the first one is called Tomorrow, and I tried to write that in, uh, in relation to the theme. Uh, the other one is called Rain, which is partly uh, inspired by Somerset Mom's great short story. So let me start with uh, Tomorrow, yeah. An infinity awaits, a plain loop survives the test of time. And I claim my faith in subdued humility, seeing too much in every possibility. The spiral that hemmed me into you gets affected by the surrounding view. But to each seems a chance. Tomorrow may resolve this trance as I wait and await. See me to the end of my day. False testimonials persuade my stay. But the movement is tight. It can make anything seem all right. As I go and I go, the cyclical waves of my dreams carry me through. Sometimes I wonder where to, and the questions reappear as the days seem to disappear. For, for value or success, for leisure or a will to impress, what follows thee? What ails me? And I find in my limitation some ease. I aim for what I most please. And I do my best. Let the fate decide the rest. As I dream of my humble nest, filled with love I may attest. And my wish should come true. By pleasure, let me live. By grace, let me go. It's end poem one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the second one is called Drain. And like I said, I, I urge everyone to check out uh, the short story by Somerset Maugham if you haven't already. It's a brilliant piece of modern day literature. Um, the, the poem is kind of vaguely inspired by it. It's not the same subject, but 
I read the short, I thought of, I was thinking of the short story when I wrote the poem. Uh, okay, here it goes, rain. I'm afraid of riding my bike on the street. I got yelled at riding my paper route 40 years ago and simple fears live on. And the rain drips from high above. Let the cleansing wind, let the cleansing wit wet winds inspire a yellow song of love. He loved her so much to a point he could paint her blind. He would sacrifice his life at her need. Unfortunately, he had courteous matters to heed. He put himself second to society. I asked him how she looked. He said, if, he said a faded memory. My tranquility was sacrificed by a friendly argument. When the hands were laid, personal remarks came into it, and the rain still dripped. Of all the vile places I see to me, thankful for accepting my shortcomings, but self-aware always. And the rain washes the earth so vast, so rotten, and the saint knows, but goes amiss all the same. What dangerous consequence to this crooked game. And the mistress lives on, and the mistress lives in. Behind me, the seat of my slit throat. I committed suicide in my previous life, right after I had cheated on my wife. But the rain still dripped, unbothered. Oh my, by quilted ease, by ferocious sleaze, maybe for a divinity unknown, a known value, uh, and, and point. Unmute yourselves and give it up for Bushra. All right, Bushra, that's how you yes, do it yes, right yes, there, yes. man. Hey, Bushra, that was oh, awesome. Dope. I loved it. Dope. I loved it. That was awesome. <laughs> killer, killer. From Sudan, by way of Illinois, he's in Illinois right now. Our new friend, his second week in a row with us. So I see the only person I have left here on the waiting list is the withdrawn. And I'm going to go a little late. Thomas Connor, get your poem ready because I'm going to add you. We're going to go a little late. I think Thomas had trouble signing up. You good? Give me a thumbs up, Tom Thomas, if you want to rock. A thumbs up? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to be able to get him on. So let's go to with the withdrawn. You find him on all the social medias, the withdrawn and the withdrawn.com. I'm trying to unmute him. And then we're going to go to Thomas Connor. Withdrawn, the floor is yours, brother. Thank you, man. Okay, this piece I have is called Ass of 2021. It's so sexy to witness how you work, be how you work your behind off for that degree girl I swear I can feel the parts of my brain you're exciting and impressing the butterflies in my stomach that can do nothing but reproduce so that this warmth between you and I can never go extinct you graduate this year and we know the school will continue not just in the terms of university, but in this life around us, where we show up every single day. God knows that since my graduation in 2016, the highest increase in learning of thyself began happening after those years. I still am today and don't yet fully get it all. But that's most likely a surface I won't ever lay my feet to rest on. This piece isn't about my migration, though. I'm sorry. From every slice of my existence. That I'm another thing you have to study. That in order for you to understand my mental health challenges, I have to send you articles to read podcasts to listen to, metaphors for what these battles are like, that you have to exhaust yourself reviewing and not understanding the material that is me. I want to give you all the answers. I really do. 
The thing is, I don't even know what they are. Some days I get them right the first time around, but that the answer ends up getting changed. On others, I submit the same solution repeatedly, repeatedly hoping for a different outcome. I wasn't designed for anyone to get a passing grade on. I take my own exams and fail. Had thoughts about dropping out so many times, yet I still stand. I don't intend for you to get scared or worry. You shouldn't have to. It's intimidating to know that this is something we are truly never going to graduate from. We will still study and learn without a real commencement ceremony. Does that fill you with hesitation? I occasionally wonder about the relief you could feel knowing that your GPA doesn't have to be affected. Just the time you've already loaned me. Baby, it might sound selfish, but I pray to God that you don't quit this course. And I am truly sorry for that. Thank you. Ooh, the wild card that was wrong. Give him energy, man. Always dope. Always Bring on the process. <laughs> the withdrawn and oh, oh wait i think i am freezing up a little yeah i was freezing up a little there we go all right am i back i'm back okay the withdrawn you can find him on all the social medias the withdrawn or his website the withdrawn.com let's wrap it up with thomas connor let me unmute him thomas let the people know where they can find you online and then let's hear your poetry. Yes, I'm on Facebook, uh, Thomas Connor, and at um, IG, uh, TAC7371. <clears throat> Did you get me? Awesome. You're good, you're good. So, all right. I don't know if I spit this one here, but I'm gonna spit it tonight again, just to make sure. <laughs> Either you die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. The choice isn't always in your hands. Circumstance sometimes dict dictates your stance. Facing the music and not knowing how to dance only proves you know the rhythm but not the moves. Life can be a killing joke, stoking the fires of our insecurities. Impurities, we have them all. Slowly we fall, diving into the winter of our discontent as we try to circumvent that none of us are innocent. We all wear the mask of sin, this eternal pandemic fluid, swimming in the ocean of sin as we peel the skin of our imperfections, tearing them off in sections, yet they grow back thicker. We're decent people in indecent times, and the times dictate the culture, so inhale that sulfur. As the Bronx and Brooklyn burns, the fires of gentrification slowly fade our generation. Give it up for Thomas Connor, yeah. our final oh, poet of the God. evening. That's, oh, that's how you close them down. Oh, that's how you shut it down. This is everything of race, Wayne, gentrification. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> Connor, I'm so happy I was able to get to him. I know he had some trouble getting on. I don't know where everyone else is on the waiting list. They would have had their shot, but. Psh, doesn't matter. Tom has got on. Tom is Connor. Put your info into the chat. So next Monday, we are back at it again. We are celebrating 420. I'm excited. Thursday night, La Bruja hosts the uh, open mic. That's our next open mic. Saturday, I am teaching. I'm featuring and I'm hosting. Make sure you give me a follow at Advocate of Words. When you spell words, that's what is he at the end. Real quick. Does, <clears throat> does anyone know? I want to try something. Does anyone know by heart the poem that I spit at the end? Good night, poet. Does anyone know it? I don't see anyone raising their hands. I, yeah, I, I see Marissa's trying to remember. Is it this? Is it, is it, is it this? Is that? 
Uh, does anyone know it? See, I was going to let someone else do it and close out the night. No, no, no one knows it. Okay, y'all going to have to get your study on because who knows? At some point, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to start having people close it out with that poem. Nonetheless, it's okay. Everyone's going to have to go. Facebook and YouTube, look up Neurek and Poets Cafe. That is where the recorded shows are. If you want to go see yourself tonight and share it with your friends, or you want to go and you hear another poem, uh, another poet perform again, make sure you do it. With that being said, pay attention. Good night, sweet poet. Thank you for sharing what you've written. Good night, sweet poet. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Good night, sweet poet. May your dreams be as imaginative as tonight's poems. Good night, sweet poet. Thank you for inviting the spirit of Miguel Agarin into your home. This has been the Monday Night Online Open Mic presented by the New York Poets Cafe. I have been your host for the evening. My name is Advocate of Words. I will see you on Saturday at either my workshop or at Mr. Speaker's show where I'll be performing, or at the Dirty Erotic Open Mic I'll be hosting. Other than that, all of you, stay clean, stay beautiful, read some poems, and I will see you later. Enjoy your evening.